In this video, we presume you've collected a biological record and want to know what to do next. First, in order to know where to send your record, you need to check what type of record you've collected. If you've gathered data on species as part of a national monitoring scheme or survey, then it's best to send the information straight to the organisation involved. If your record doesn't quite fit into a survey, the next best place to send it is your local environmental record centre. A spot of googling should produce relevant contact details. There's three basic flavours of record centre, dependent on their hosting type. This is Tom Hunt, from the Association of Local Environmental Record Centres. Um, so one of the, the main ones, uh, and perhaps the, the biggest group, are local authority hosted record centres, and, and they tend to be um, within a planning department or an ecological department within a, a, a local authority. The second uh, most numerous category are those hosted by local county wildlife trusts. But an example of that might be uh, in Cornwall, where Cornwall Wildlife Trust hosts a record centre. Uh, and the third flavour, the, the least most numerous category, are the independents. Um, and so most of those are independent charities, although they're not necessarily got charitable status. But here in York, at NYEDC, they are their own independent charity. If you just want a single place to input all your data, the iRecord website or app are both valuable resources. It's quick, easy and free to set up an account. And from here, you can enter all the data we discussed in episode one, Plus, you can add photos and a description. Once your record has been submitted, it undergoes a process of validation and verification. All the records that are submitted to us go through a verification and validation process. Here's Simon Pickles from the North and East Yorkshire Ecological Data Centre. We will, if we believe a record not to be correct, let people know. But we will also, in doing that, do it in a constructive way. That the whole purpose of submitting the record is to build your expertise. I'm thinking of things like the iSpot um, website, where you know it, it's designed for people to submit a record to to get feedback on that very very quickly, and to to, to um, network with people who will give advice on if it's not right, why is it not right? After this process is complete, you should receive some feedback. This can be as simple as learning that yes, your record has been accepted as correct, or verifiers might want to ask a few more questions about what you saw. There's also the possibility that your record might not be accepted. Don't be disheartened. Try viewing it as a learning opportunity on your road to becoming a great biological recorder. Don't be afraid to submit a record, never be afraid to submit a record. The culture of natural history in this country has always built around mentoring and all the national schemes and societies and all the local natural history societies that I know have people who are more than willing to mentor. This has been a brief introduction on how to submit a biological record. Why not give it a go yourself? You never know. You might just be the first person to spot a new species for your county. My days when I was working at Record in, in Cheshire, and it would have been, I think, uh, late spring, early summer, and we had the, the window open, and um, a big insect flew in. And we had the first tree bumblebee record for Cheshire recorded at the local environmental record centre and we thought wouldn't it be brilliant if every new species could announce its arrival at every new county by popping into the record centre.